Hey there, fellow superhero enthusiasts. Ready to dive into the electrifying world of Blue Beetle? Well, before you hit play on that exciting trailer, hold up. In today's video, we're strapping on our superhero capes and taking a deep dive into everything you need to know before watching Blue Beetle. From uncovering the origin story that'll have you hooked to unraveling the mind-blowing powers that make this hero stand out, we've got it all covered. But that's not all we'll also be delving into the significance of Blue Beetle in the superhero realm and dissect the hidden details in the trailer that you might have missed at first glance. So, get ready to embark on a rollercoaster of knowledge and entertainment because, after this, you'll be the ultimate Blue Beetle expert. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. It all kicked off when comic book writer Charles Nicholas Wojcicki introduced Blue Beetle in 1939. From there, the character went solo and also joined iconic squads like the Justice League and Teen Titans, carving a top-tier hero legacy in the DCU. Over time, different folks stepped into the Blue Beetle suit, giving the character fresh spins. Created by Wojcicki and Fox Comics, later owned by Charlton Comics, the original Blue Beetle was Dan Garrett, who fought crime with superpowers gained by ingesting Vitamin 2X, a revamped version of this character, archaeologist Dan Garrett, introduced in 1964 by Charlton Comics, drew mystical abilities from an ancient Egyptian scarab. The next Blue Beetle, Ted Kord, came after Dan Garrett and was crafted by Charlton before DC Comics took the reins. Ted made his leap to the DC Universe during Crisis on Infinite Earths, joining other Charlton characters. He snagged his own 24-issue comic and, unique among heroes, relied on gadgets he cooked up with science, no superpowers. Ted became a Justice League member but met his end before the Infinite Crisis crossover by DC Comics. The third Blue Beetle, from DC Comics, is Jamie Reyes, a teen who finds that the original Scarab turns into a battle suit, helping him fight crime and explore space. Over time, he joined the Teen Titans and headlined two Blue Beetle comics. In DC's 2011 New 52, Jamie took the Blue Beetle spotlight, occasionally nodding to earlier versions. In the DC Rebirth update, the past renditions were brought back. Under James Gunn and Peter Safran's guidance, the DC universe is embarking on a fresh journey. However, there are still some projects from the prior DC leadership slated for release this year. Unlike Batgirl and Scoob, Holiday Haunt, Blue Beetle remained intact on the DC release schedule. Amid the Warner Bros. Discovery merger, several upcoming films got the axe, but fortunately, our Scarab-powered, Latino-led, first live-action DC superhero survived. The debut trailer revealed the official plotline of this DC film. Meet Jamie Reyes, a young Latino graduate with big dreams for the future. Balancing changes at home and the quest for his path isn't easy. But destiny takes charge when he uncovers an ancient alien tech relic, the Scarab. The Scarab picks Jamie as its host, gifting him incredible might through impenetrable armor equipped with wings for flight. Despite initial resistance, the Scarab Link transforms him into the Blue Beetle. Alongside learning to control the Scarab's power, Jamie faces off against the supervillain mastermind Victoria Cord, who's set on seizing the military-grade Scarab, aided by her henchmen. The ancient Scarab finds its roots in the Reach, an alien civilization notorious for conquering planets via warfare and advanced tech. After Green Lantern Corps compelled them to halt planet conquests through war, they created the Scarabs. These devices, like a hive mind, could possess a host's mind and identity. The chosen host would be manipulated to undermine a nation's defenses, paving the way for a takeover without outright war. Beyond crafting a stunning blue exoskeleton around the host, the Scarab also grants remarkable abilities. Scarab's AI possesses a distinct personality and can decipher numerous languages. Powers encompass wing-mounted rocket boosters, flight, unyielding resilience, superhuman strength, and nanotechnology, enabling the creation of desired objects. The film zooms in on Jamie's journey as a fresh superhero, adapting to newfound abilities and learning the ropes. Battling baddies like Victoria Court and Conrad Carapax, who want to hijack his Scarab's power, adds to the excitement. But that Scarab, it's got a mind and a mission of its own. Each planet's Scarab has its goals, and Jamie's Scarab isn't exactly a rule follower. How Jamie handles this unique partnership and masters his newfound abilities? Well, that's a story only the movie can tell. Based on the trailer, Jamie's got some serious superpowers. An advanced exosuit for protection and enhanced vision to spot trouble. He's got cool gadgets from Ted Cord, and even makes his own weapons with help from the Scarab in his suit. One of his creations is a big sword that looks like the one in the game Final Fantasy VII. 
When the actor Zolo Meridwena talked about where the ideas for the gadgets came from, he said that it is what a 22-year-old would like. Zolo and the director Angel really like anime, and they got lots of ideas from shows like Akira, a major inspiration for Angel. They wanted to show respect for these characters they loved when they were younger by using them as inspiration. What truly sets this superhero film apart is its refreshing and exceptional approach to Jamie's family dynamics. Unlike the convention of concealing one's superhero identity from family, Jamie embraces transparency. His family becomes an integral part of his transformative journey, infusing the narrative with a deeply rooted familial connection that adds a layer of authenticity and relatability. Director Angel Manuel Soto explains that the heart of the movie is the Latino family. This is something that hasn't been explored much in superhero movies before. Blue Beetle is breaking new ground by being the first superhero movie with a Latino lead character, and Jamie's family isn't just on the sidelines they play important roles in the story, making the movie even more special and meaningful. Another exciting aspect of Blue Beetle is the city it's set in. Jamie's got his own fictional city named Palmera. This choice was made to put Blue Beetle on par with big names like Superman or Batman, who have their iconic cities like Gotham or Metropolis. Palmera City is meant to be the heart of the story's themes, a place where Jamie truly belongs. This doesn't mean that the real city of El Paso, which is present in the comics and the family's life, isn't important. El Paso has its own charm and significance. However, to position Blue Beetle as a potential leader in the DC universe, the creation of Palmera City was essential. The world building around Palmera City played a crucial role in making the movie bigger, and it's what ultimately led to the movie getting a theatrical release. In an interview, Soto said, Once we started writing the script and I started to create concept art, the studio allowed me to run free in my creativity. Unbeknownst to them and to me at the time, they were able to see the promise of how we pictured a city, how we really wanted the city to be, and the bigger realm of this cultural zeitgeist, and the impact that this can have culturally, but also in the superhero genre, to try something different. We hoped that people would see it for what it is, which is that it has a lot of love and a lot of heart, and the studio felt like it had the potential to be theatrical. DC Comics fans have another reason to get hyped, this film is a big deal. Meridwena dropped a hint that Blue Beetle holds weight in the DCU, and that's intriguing. In the comics, Blue Beetle's a seasoned ally of top-tier heroes. While we can't confirm that dynamic for this film, a strong debut could open doors. Success for Blue Beetle could mean DCU's cosmic expansion. The current focus is Earth foes like Victoria Cord, but Meridwena's take looks skyward, outer space adventures might be on the horizon. As the first major Latino superhero film, it's a monumental feat. Positive indicators and a promising director hint at something extraordinary. The diverse cast adds cultural richness. Blue Beetle has an excellent chance to have a major cultural impact when it hits the big screen. Blue Beetle's inception occurred within Walter Hamada's era at DC Studios, but intriguingly, it's now whispered that James Gunn and Peter Safran have grander intentions. They're orchestrating a seamless inclusion of Blue Beetle into the expansive DCEU landscape moving forward. Tantalizing whispers suggest that this forthcoming Blue Beetle cinematic venture could serve as a launching pad for an entire DC series centered around the enigmatic character Booster Gold. Notably, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold share a close friendship within the comic realm, and this dynamic connection might just extend to the television screen. As the narrative tendrils of the DCEU continue to weave, the synergy between these characters could potentially blossom into a compelling TV series, giving fans an interconnected experience that spans both the silver screen and the small screen. Taking on the role of Jamie Reyes is Cobra Kai's Zolo Meridwena, a brilliant fit due to his physicality and Mexican-American teen vibe. But Jamie's story isn't just about him. His family holds a vital place in his Blue Beetle journey. Joining Meridwena are Belissa Escobedo as Sister Milagros, George Lopez as Uncle Tio Rudy, Adriana Barraza as Jamie's Nana, Elpidia Carrillo as Mother Rocio, and Damian Alcazar as Father Alberto. Director Angel Manuel Soto prioritized crafting an authentic Latino-American family, echoing the diverse accents and experiences from the original comics. In the mix is Bruna Marquezine as Jenny Cord, portraying Jamie's love interest. Jenny takes up the mantle of the second Blue Beetle, being Ted Cord's daughter. After Ted's sudden vanishing act, Jenny carries on his legacy, striving to uphold court industries. Remarkably, she passes the scarab to Jamie, tucked in a burger box, safeguarding its power. 
The villains step up, led by Susan Sarandon as Jenny's aunt Victoria Cord, a name that sparks curiosity about Ted's possible return alongside Jamie. The trailer hints at Ted's superhero aircraft, the bug, making an appearance. In Victoria's corner, Raul Trujillo takes on Carapax the indestructible man. The film's approach to Blue Beetle's history remains uncertain. Legacy matters for many DC heroes, and it'd be great to see that historical sense in the film. Now, for the voice behind the scarab that's driving DC's next superhero forward. It's none other than Becky G. The dollar singer shared on Instagram that she's lending her voice to Kaji Da, the alien entity controlling the scarab. Puerto Rican filmmaker Angel Manuel Soto leads the direction of DC's Blue Beetle. The script comes from Garrett Dunn at Alcacer, also tied to Sony's El Merton. Working alongside DC Studios, Entertainment One, Sanfran Company, and S&K Pictures, co-produced a film. Executive producers include Garrett Grant, Walter Hamada, and Galen Baseman. Director Angel Manuel Soto emphasized authenticity in the movie, saying there won't be no typical stereotypes. Their aim is for the audience to genuinely connect with each character. And there you have it, folks. The curtain's been lifted on the enigmatic world of Blue Beetle. From its intriguing origins to the awe-inspiring powers it commands, we've peeled back the layers to reveal what makes this hero genuinely extraordinary. So, as you settle into that theater seat or queue up your streaming service, you're armed with the insider knowledge to appreciate every electrifying moment. Get ready to embrace the beetle and all its magnificence. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more immersive journeys into the realm of literature. Thanks for watching.